Knicks head to the Alamo where they haven't won since 2014. Looking to get back on track. Looking to bounce back after going on a three-game losing skid. And hey, they, they went in against the Spurs team that winners of four day last five. They were feeling good about themselves. Some good wins. But on the second night of a back-to-back, there was no doubt that the Knicks should have beat this team. And they would do so handily. 121 to 109. Led by, most importantly, R. J. Barrett with a much needed 32 point, seven three pointers made, a career high seven threes, 11 from 20 from downtown. Broadway Barrett puts the team on his back and leads him to victory 121 to 109. It's good to see RJ get back on track, man. This was needed. We talked about his lackluster shooting numbers on Knicks Weekly last night because it was just absolutely pedestrian. I think it was 21% wide open threes over his last 13 games. Absolutely abysmal. But the one thing that I said when, when me and Al were on in a way that we can get him back on track is just getting him involved early. And we saw that. You know, we saw that in this game, man. There, there was a real effort on behalf of Tips because they really got RJ going early. I thought they made an attempt to get him out on fast breaks, especially on, off the rebounds. I thought he did a great job attacking. Finished much better tonight. And of course, seven made threes on the night, man. Played well. Played well with the second unit as well. Where, where we want to see him get a lot more run you know take him out of the starting unit a little bit take him away from the starting unit get him out there with quickly and rose and obi and, and uh and his new center on the second unit and, and that's mitchell robinson i was hearing the uh grimes coming in his place and yeah. all, 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 all everything we're hearing everything and he definitely responded uh you know whether you want to put that on tibbs or you want to put that on that work, whatever the case may be. He definitely responded in this game. I don't know what it is about the Spurs. I, I feel like he likes to play against the Spurs. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, very good game. You can see that we played a lot through him tonight. So Julius Randle had a slow start. He uh, eventually rounded that thing out in the second half. Um, this is the kind of game we wanted to see, you know, defense leading the offense, the fast break. Um, I, I'm just very happy about it. This is yeah. the kind of game that we needed after the last few games that we've been having to deal with. So very happy about it. Yeah, as you said, man, they, they played through him. And, and that's what me and Alex yeah. had talked about on, on last night's Knicks Weekly is, is, you know, getting him involved early, earlier in the game to just get him in a rhythm, get him comfortable. And right. you saw that. I got to give credit to number one tips for running through him. But I thought a lot of this started with Julius really deferring, you know, and, and we've seen this before, man, where this offense is sputtering, they're getting into a little bit of a rut, and Julius gets into those modes where he, he he's, he's being passive, you know, he's letting other guys get into a rhythm, but I thought that really helped us tonight because I thought the ball didn't stick, which yes. was very important. You know, the ball was moving, the ball movement was crisp, Everybody was moving the rock around, making quick decisions, and I thought it benefited everybody, but that starts with Julius. I think it was a big uh, move for him to defer. I, I feel like he did a good job of that tonight. Um, he wasn't forcing anything, uh, not even just from the offensive perspective, but yeah. uh, or shooting perspective, but also uh, from moving the ball. I, I feel like a lot of uh, those hockey assists were um, because of Julius Randle in that first half. Like I said, it eventually rounded out in that second half where he saw the shot finally starting to hit for him. But yeah, a, a lot of that is thanks to Julius Randle for sure in this yeah. game because, you know, for him to see that RJ Barrett was having that kind of game from the jump, like from the start, RJ was looking good. Um, and, and then the ball was just fizzing around and moving all over the place uh, to Ali Burks, who was having a nice game. I, Emmanuel quickly. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the um, unselfishness from Julius Randle and everybody. So so, yeah, I really hope that that's something that sticks. Now, that's now Mitch admitted to the media today that that he's he's been gassed, he's been out of shape. Yeah, we've seen it. You know, not looking the same. He goes with Noel. Noel, I think, didn't do a great job on protecting Spurs. Fifty-four points in the paint. Uh, didn't do a good job defensively.
But give credit to the Blackness Monster, man. 11 points, 14 boards, 8 on the offensive glass. That's his A game. Blockness Monster came to play tonight, man. Everyone's going to talk about RJ, and rightfully so, because he shot incredible. But Julius, to me, that was one of my favorite games of his. Yeah. Just under control, not flat. I don't care about points. I don't care about points. Julius will get his points if he just plays within the flow. He was un- I don't really think he forced one shot tonight. Maybe he forced one. I mean, of the 12 shots he took, did you have an issue with any of them? When it comes to R.J. Barrett, um, I just we just got to make him a focal point of the offense. You know, we can't just have him just standing in the corner, you know, so I like the fact that he was really aggressive. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and shout out to Julius, man, because he kind of took a back seat, got everybody involved, and then, you know, he just picked his spot. So you can just see the team was different. As far as the switch, though, for Noel and Mitch, um, I'm not really sold on it, to be honest, because Spurs had a big advantage inside the paint. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think it's just a hit and miss. It's a different night from the other night. But before I go on, you know what I'm saying? I just want to say, yo, Magic Johnson, how about him? Marcus Allen, how about him? Kevin McHale, let me switch it up to him too, right? OJ Simpson, let me put him involved, right? There's some more of them out there. But what I'm trying to say is we're going to put RJ in that 32 club. He dropped 32 tonight. So pay attention to what's going on. You've seen the energy, the energy tonight. You've seen the effort tonight. You've seen the squad come together. You see a team play tonight. You've seen us, you know, on playing for one another, being there for one another, you know what I'm saying? And you see us responding to what Tom, Tom said. It's not about the moves that he make the switch in and out the arm team who's going to start who ain't going to start it's about finding out can you respond can you still play for me do Tom still got the locker room you know those type things was being said throughout this week do Tom got the locker room has he lost it do we need to get rid of Tom we want to get rid of everybody when things ain't going right but last year compared to this year it's still the same way we had a losing record this time last year this time we still got a losing record but we turned everything around and everybody was feeling good and feeling great about what was going on. Be patient and let the stay. Let the team, you know what I'm saying, get seasoning. Let them get all this, all, all this cooking in. 